Hello from New Zealand. Uh, my name is Nick Davenport. I'm the CEO and founder of Lanico. Thank you very much for this opportunity to address this roundtable and update you on the progress that we've made since 2020. As most people are now aware, respiratory air quality is the greatest health issue facing mankind. Back in 2019, pre-COVID, it was already the greatest issue facing public health for mankind. Due to poor atmospheric and environmental air quality, which was affecting the health of the whole planet to the extent that millions a year had the deaths attributed to the problem. Now, since COVID, it is the number one problem literally on everybody's lips. So you ask, how does Lanico fit into this global health problem? We have developed wool filter technology, which is perfectly positioned as a solution. It's designed to protect the health of everyday people by removing those toxic particles, whether they're from atmospheric air pollution, environmental issues, viruses, pollens, bacteria, and microbes with every breath that people take. But not only that, because we have a wool-based technology, it will substitute other products which are synthetic fibre-based, which contribute microfibre pollution into our rivers and therefore into our oceans. So this is definitely a solution with two real tangible benefits. We call our technology ecostatic, which means it's an environmentally friendly, electrostatic, wool-based air filter technology, which provides performance which is equal to, and in many cases better than, synthetic filter media for removing those harmful microparticles in the air. But it does so with lower resistance, meaning either easier to breathe through if it's worn as a device, or with low energy if it's incorporated in a device which has a power source. And because it's wool, uh, it has enhanced functionality in many areas, and I'll cover a little bit of that uh, shortly. In addition, the wool provides genuine sustainability credentials which are aligned with global consumer trends. And these trends create the opportunities aligned with those consumer needs, particularly in health. And it also has performance which works in critical situations. And I'll give you an example of that. So I'm going to share with you an example of a use case for our technology in a very, very current application. Hopefully by the time you see this, the Artemis I rocket from NASA will have blasted off from Cape Canaveral on the first of several voyages into deep space. The first time man has been into deep space since 1972. And uh, in this particular instance, the objective is to establish the first woman to walk on the moon and the first person of color to walk on the moon and to establish a base station for further deep space exploration on, on, on the moon and beyond. The Orion capsule in which these astronauts will travel is undoubtedly the most expensive vehicle in mankind's history in one of the most significant voyages of expo exploration in history as well. So a, a fairly important application, but where this one is uh, used, where, where our ecostatic is used, is for the critical life support system on board. So in the case of a potential fire, which is anticipated could be a, for example, the outgassing of a high energy source lithium ion battery in a laptop computer, that would emit hot toxic particles and the fire suppression system consists of water, water vapour and a water mist. So hot toxic particles and water vapour with the existing synthetic technologies glaze over and form a film and clog the filters within a matter of 10 or so minutes. By fitting our filter technology into this system, it increases the life window to over an hour, which then enables those astronauts to deal with the situation and save the mission. So this represents a, a total endorsement of our technology and an example of ultimate trust. 
But that's not the only use case naturally, because there are very few rockets. So here's a few other examples of uses of, the, of this wool technology. The automotive industry, every car that is built has a cabin filter, and that cabin filter is to protect the air of the occupants of that vehicle. It's a fantastic opportunity to demonstrate uh, that use to a, to, a, to a very wide population, whether they're in um, electric vehicles or internal combustion engine dri driven vehicles. In the healthcare market, the water resistance, as I've explained with the NASA case, also applies for the protection of, the, uh, of medical devices and of people because the filter works exceptionally well in this high humidity environment. In addition, the more mundane vacuum cleaners are a classic example for the use with a low energy high particle capture filter can be deployed to remove not just the dust particles but also microbes. That can extend to the home or commercial premises and offices where COVID has raised the level and the standards and the awareness of the importance of air quality uh, in those working and living spaces. And not finally, but as the last example, personal devices, PPE for medical, industrial spaces, or even urban, urban air pollution uh, are a classic example of where the low breathing resistance and high efficiency of the technology is put to good effect and also creates opportunities. So here is an example of such an opportunity derived from our experience in COVID. We've taken the technology, low resistance, high particle capture, combined it with antiviral protection. And here in this instance, the lessons from COVID of FFP2 masks with good fit and low leakage, which potentially can have high resistance, are combined with our very low resistance ecostatic filter media to create a new category of mask, which is infinitely superior to the triple fold pleated mask, which is the most common mask used on the planet. And this is a future opportunity for the healthcare sector, meets a global need, and deploys those unique benefits that the wool technology brings. So all of this hasn't been easy. Huge challenges. Cost is one, because wool is a premium fiber, much more costly than synthetics, and certainly our farmers would like to keep it that way. That in turn means that our pricing has got to be delivered in a premium position and that uh, requires a significant amount of effort to ensure that we can compete against high performance, low cost synthetic alternatives. And in the current world, carbon, our global warming footprint. Here wool is a poor performer <clears throat> and despite our sustainability credentials, we have got an awful amount of work to do before we can become competitive. In a similar vein, the co-materials, those non-woolen materials that are needed for supporting functions for filters and devices, are still necessary to deploy the product to useful effect. So how we, t how we meet that challenge with different materials is before us and we are addressing that. And finally, I think one of the important challenges uh, for us to bring about uh, and make people aware of is this, we do have a huge story to tell, but we need to tell the whole world about it. So finding an affordable platform for that with the widest reach is what we continually seek. Which will bring us to, uh, I guess, my summary here. I don't want to take all of your time today. Um, Wool for us is, is proving that filters can be a trustworthy application area. And our markets, as you have seen, uh, are multiple from this one platform. But they're not without their challenges. Mixed materials, lower carbon uh, than synthetics, and fully recyclables is a goal, which we are, uh, have got a huge task to face. And we have a huge story to tell, and that story of wool protecting human health for the whole better, betterment of the wool industry. So on that note, I'll, I'll summarize and uh, Hopefully we'll get some feedback from you and enjoy the rest of the Congress. Thank you.